Hey friends, welcome back to the Happy Homeowner Podcast Outdoor Edition. My name is Dan Keller, and I believe that owning a home is the largest and most valuable asset we have second to our time. As a veteran mortgage professional, investor, and Puget Sound angler, my commitment is to bring you content each week that will fill each one of these buckets in your life. Jump on board with us today, enjoy the show, and we'll see you back in the marina. Hey friends, welcome back to another Happy Homeowner Outdoor edition of our podcast. And you know, I'm thinking about changing the name to the Happy Homeowner Outdoor edition with Connor and John, because it's so good having you guys in here every time. It's rightfully, I mean, it's just perfect time of year, but we're getting ready, we're heading into August. So we just turned over into August. The next biggest thing that's coming into the Puget Sound are humpies, pink salmon. And so today is all about the humpy fishery. We're going to talk about the Puget Sound, not necessarily rivers. And uh, we're just going to let Connor and John take this away because you guys are the pros. Absolutely. So starting out, Connor, um, humpies. Let's talk about just the, the legality as the regulations first before we get into it. You want to you want to kind of touch on that real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Now, this can obviously change throughout the years as far as how many we can keep and uh, as far as, yeah, the areas that we're going to be fishing. Um, we're going to focus on 8-1, which is going to be from like uh, up in Deception Pass all the way down into Saratoga Passage. Then we're going to be fishing 8-2, uh, which is going to be basically from Baby Island down to the Shipwreck, which is a phenomenal spot for pinks, and then into Area 9 and 10. Um, when we're fishing up in, the rules are very astray, so you gotta, be, you gotta be careful of how many fish you're gonna be keeping in which areas. Um, there's a couple areas where you can keep wild fish, where you can keep one, and then there's a couple areas where you can keep two, but they have to be hatchery fish. But again, that can change as yeah. we get throughout the year, different years. But all pink salmon are gonna be wild. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So there's no restrictions there. No, you no. have to watch. It's going to be home. it's going to be wild yeah. fish no matter. So what. let's hit pause on that real quick because you just made a great point, John. I'm out there this weekend fishing with my son Hudson. We were over on the possession bar. We caught two chinook, we caught two or three coho, <laughs> a couple of pinks. So let's kind of real quick too before we get going. What's the easiest way for an angler to really to say what did I just catch? Let's say it's a five or a six pound fish. What did I just catch? Well, the first thing you want, that I go by is the spots on the tail, but okay. you should never confuse a Chinook with a humpy. Uh, on a humpy tail, their mouth, their gum line is going to be white, mm -hmm. and the spots on their tail are going to be oval, where a Chinook is going to have black spots on the tail, but and it's going to have a black gum line and, uh, you know, kind of silver rays on the tail. And the, and the, pink salmon humpy uh is going to have more clearish tail so you you gotta you know to the novice angler it's hard to tell the difference but you know take take a look in the rule book and and, and try to differentiate between the fish before you start fishing because you don't want to come back to the dock with a 20 inch chinook yeah. thinking that it's a yeah. pink salmon i always go straight for the jaw i go straight for the mouth the gum line and if it's black it's an indicator now uh, same thing. Co we got a lot of coho out there right now, too. And then as we get further into the season, there's going to be a lot more. Same thing with them. How do you decipher a coho versus Hardly any dots on the tail at all. Okay. And they have a white gum line also. And yep. uh, when they're not too mature, it's very hard to see the black spots on the back that, you know, in a, in a river coho, there it's, you know, the black spots on the back are real prominent, but not so much out in the salt water. Uh, so it's a lot easier to tell a coho from a Chinook. Perfect. Yeah, I figured we'd start with that because there, there are a lot of fish out there, a lot of different Lots. types of salmon. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Back to you, Connor. Areas. Okay. So I'm going to decipher a, a few areas we like to focus for pink salmon. Uh, I'll name the place and then I'm going to say what area you're going to be in just so you can go off the rules for that area. Uh, one wonderful spot in Area 9 is going to be Browns Bay. Uh, it's going to hold a lot, a lot of pinks. Um, next place is going to be Humpy Hollow, and this is kind of their staging grounds for when they're going to make it up into, you know, the Snohomish River. That's going to be in Area 8, too, so that's that, that Muckle Teal Ferry down to Shipwreck. And that's going to hold a lot of pinks here. Once we start getting a little rain, they're going to flush over to that side. Uh, another really good spot, especially earlier in the season, like we're talking now, is going to be Maxwell and the Indian Point. 
which that's going to be on the west side of Possession Bar, but you're alongside Whidbey Island there a little bit, and that's another a great place where those fish will stage. Um, place in Area 10 that we're going to focus on is going to be Richmond Beach. John also had another little spot that he found some pinks. That's not in the book. Maybe he can kind of explain that to you guys. This is the first time I ever fished Kingston for pinks. Um, I was catching and releasing Chinook over there, and uh, I just had uh, coho gear down, and, boy, we just absolutely crushed the pink mm. salmon there. You would get one minutes or seconds as soon as you got your line in the water. Um, you know, on this, on this gear right here with uh, – a flasher, mm -hmm. a pro troll flasher with, uh, a, you know, a purple haze squid or ace high fly with, you know, some, a pink bead there between the hooks. And, uh, gosh, I put it down there and, uh, just catching everything. I, I was amazed because normally you would fish with a sure. white, this is your typical gear yep. right here, the white flasher with a pink squid. Uh, the day before I caught all my pinks on that, but I was out to target coho, and so I put out coho gear and found it surprisingly good for three species of salmon. I mean, incredibly good, not just good. Yeah. Wow. So you're over on the Kingston side. Yes. Yeah, okay. just right in front of Kingston out there in about 200 feet of water. So one of the things that I really appreciate about your business is that you guys are in the business of helping people put more fish in your boat, helping you become a better angler. You have spent years putting together a series of maps. And so I'd love for you to support a local small business and go buy, why don't you hold that up? Yeah. Go buy the salt, John's Saltwater Fishing Journal. But in the meantime, if you need to go to johnsportinggoods.com and you can click on the map section and see the same thing, humpies for each one of these areas. Um, but go buy the manual and go support John's, but you can also go to the website. Well, Dan, every place we're talking about, there's a map in this book. So you could yep. take, you can take it out in the boat with yep. you and have it, you know, right, right on your lap and, and see how to fish. It's kind of, you know, if you don't fish a lot, it's a yeah. shortcut to figuring it out. And a lot of people become very successful anglers by just looking at the map, look at the description of the area yep. and, and you can be good at this. One of the ways I learned how to fish possession bar and the San Juans, literally, I was on my boat, <laughs> Hudson, wait for a minute, yep. and flipping through your manual. So Absolutely. Um, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a great guide. So wanna, let's transition to gear. Yeah. Because I think this is really important. You're out fishing for coho and you're going to hook them. We'll, I'm going to come back at the end during coho season and you have a, a humpy year. How do you avoid, if you're fishing strictly for coho, how do you avoid the humpy catch? But for now, let's talk about humpies what's your best setup how do you yeah. rig it all of that good stuff well these two rigs right here the this like i said earlier this is your typical rig uh white flasher hot spot flasher with a 1.5 pink squid with a little sparkly skirt on the inside but like i said dan uh, i put this rig out for uh so i could avoid the humpies and just catch coho and a, and i caught lots of coho and, and pink salmon both i mean it just it's nice to have a rig that catches a little bit of everything yep. or a lot of everything and so you know this is an ace eye fly so this is just your typical coho setup so you got flasher what 30 32 inches yeah there's 36 inches, inches, 36 inches a leader here okay yep. and an ace high um and you got uh a glow bead and uh -huh. a, a pink glow bead yep. in here which is actually it's a small item but it's pretty important were you running a little herring strip on there oh too? yes yep. i had a piece of herring strip yep. on there cool. and it just absolutely lit it up um when we were there three days ago you literally couldn't have this in the water for more than 60 wow. seconds yeah. without getting one species of salmon wow so and then you've got a smaller what's this little guy here connor i've That's never just seen an that eight inch pro troll flasher you know for the guys who are going to run dropper setups okay. and you know aren't maybe going to fish off a downrigger okay just a little less pull on your rod when you're trolling around uh it's still going to have an effective dodge to it you know, when we're trolling for these pinks, you're trolling slower, 1.5 to, to 2 miles an hour. So that means you can get away with your, your do metal dodgers, and they're not going to sit there and rotate over. Okay. Uh, it's more of a dodging kind of motion to them. Okay. So ex another excellent way would be, yeah, metal dodger, just white in, in color is perfect. And when we're running these pink hoochies behind them, if you're going to do your white board with the pink hoochie, you're going to do 16 inches a liter, just okay. a little bit shorter. Yep. Yeah, I noticed that. A little bit shorter. And then is this a little thicker or are you using 30? You're going to use 20-pound 20, 20 liter, 20 a little bit lighter. That's going to free up that little pink hoochie there and let it yeah. let it move. Okay. I had a Chinook snap me off, though, the other day on the strike <laughs> with that 20-pound test. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And then 
Just a single hook. Is that a guideline? Is that a rule? Is that a two out red hook? Okay. That, work, that works real okay. good. Perfect. Okay. I see some stuff over here. You want to talk about what my son really is into right now is yeah. casting for these little things. You want to want to give us a little tutorial on yeah, best absolutely. practices there? Yeah. Once we start getting in, you know, the middle of August, you're going to see a huge influence of these fish and they're going to be schooled up where they're rolling on the surface down to 60 feet. It's just plumb full of pinks. Okay. Uh, so a, a very fun way for the family and an enjoyable way is to take those buzz bombs. Okay. Uh, there's there's multiple different styles, but buzz bomb would be the most famous. There's rotators, there's blizzards, there's all sorts of lures as far as uh, that style of fishing. And you're going to cast and let that thing kind of fall. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you can absolutely <laughs> load up on pinks when you're doing this. You're okay. just fishing a very a specific area, and it's very effective. So I'm throwing a buzz bomb. I'm going to cast out 20, 30 feet, yep. count to, if you're coaching a kid on this, count to 10, just, count yep. to five, and then yep. just start reeling and jerking. How, how does the action look? What you're going to do, you're going to cast it and you're going to let this thing fall. These pink salmon love to, to love to eat stuff when these lures are falling. Okay. So if you cast and you can even keep it in free spool and let that thing fall for a good, I don't know, five or 10 seconds. And then if I'm going to retrieve it back to my boat, I'm going to pull up. And that, that you're gonna, it's basically like you're twitching jigs in the river. You're going to twitch your rod up, and that thing's going to flutter back down, and you're just going to retrieve it back to your boat. Got it. Okay. Now, once you get around the 15th of August, the shipwreck, which is about a mile south of Muckleteo, you'll see large, on the incoming tide, you'll see large roving schools of these pinks, and you can just cast right ahead of the schools, and they'll take this stuff right on the surface. You cast it out there, twitch, cast, twitch, cast, twitch, and it's just unbelievably fun. Yeah. I love it. Okay, Connor, walk us through this one real quick, because I know you got the gear over there. I'm going to hand yeah. this over to you. Why don't you show... Yeah. I'll show you how I rig these up yep. now. The most effective way to keep this thing straight up and down, and that's the whole point, you want this hook straight up and down, is you're going to use a siwash hook, which mm -hmm. siwash hook is an open eye hook. And you've so got a pack of them right there, I got I a see. pack of yep. them right here, okay. and we're using two-aught hooks. Okay. So you're going to close the eye and tie that on to the end of your leader. Okay. And what I like to do is I'll take my pink squid, and I'll put that right above the hook, so okay. it's going to sit right on the hook. And again, that's just a little extra flare and a little extra movement for these fish. Usually above that, you're going to have a bead of some sort. Buzz bomb makes bumpers, but I just found beads work a little nice. It doesn't stick to the... It's like a ball bearing. Exactly. Yep. It lets this buzz bomb rotate freely. And then you, you guys sell packs of those. Oh, I yeah. see those right there. I got there. packs okay. of the UV. beads. Okay. And this, your leader is going to slide up and down through this, your buzz bomb here. Yep. And then I always follow it with a swivel just to keep my stuff from getting kind of knotted up. And yeah, because it could really twist your line up if you, yeah. if you don't have a swivel okay. in there. And those rubber buzz bombs will catch a little bit more. So a lot of the times it'll sit there and gnarl up your line. So I like okay. to use that plastic okay. bead. And, you, and again, you're, what, are you about 30, 30 inches there? It, this, that's not super important. Okay. I would just use at least a foot or two of okay. leader just so you, if you have to cut off and retie, you have a little extra leader right. there. To, if it's too long, it's too hard to cast accurately. Right, exactly. Okay. But that should be your end product right about okay. there a couple feet there yeah little okay and then this little guy i don't know if you've got one of these tied oh, yeah. up yet walk us through that that's just another jig you this, can is cast. A, this is this is basically a twitching jig we would use yep. in the river right but okay. uh, it's a marabou style jig this is a half ounce so it's got a little weight to it so you can get it out there and then i found these little worm tails on these jigs are just dynamite for for enticing those pinks so okay Another form of jigging you can do uh, as far as like if you're buzz bomb fishing, you can cast one of these as well. I love it. Heck yeah. And the same action. Same cast action. Cast out? Yep, cast out, let it fall for a minute, and just like John was saying, you're just going to twitch that thing as it's falling and twitch it, uh, reel it back to your boat. Okay. Uh, we're trolling now. Let's go back to trolling. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier speed's a little bit slower. Absolutely. 1.5 to 2.0. Okay. And then depths like let's uh, see so get out there and you can't find a school necessarily right yet or you, like you're over there fishing for coho uh where should you start as you're as you're trying to target and find these guys starting 200 feet of water okay uh, they're kind of a mid-water fish now sometimes they'll be closer to shore especially down by the shipwreck down by muckle teal but most of the time they're they're out hovering they'll be suspended in you know over 200 feet of water okay sometimes shallower there you know you know how fishing is there's an exception to every rule but sure. Um, you said, where do you start? So that's where you start. Okay. And start looking for them on your fish finder or on the surface. Okay. And then depth-wise, gear, probably 45. 60 feet. 60? Okay. 60. Start at 60 and work. Although, you know, I uh, 
three or four days ago, I caught them all at 60, and the next day I caught them all at 100. Oh, wow. Over there at Kingston. Okay. But it, in every spot you go to, it's going to vary a little bit. If I was going down the shipwreck, I'd just put my stuff down, one down at 30, daylight, and one at 60, and start trolling. And you're okay. going to find that if you're trolling with the tide in the same direction the tide is going, you're going to catch more fish as opposed okay. to, as opposed to trolling against the tide. So that was my tide. next question. Same, similar like with Co. you trolling yeah. with the tide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we're early August, really early. Still, first week of August. If you guys were to go out tomorrow, um, you know, or in the next couple of weeks, and you just wanted to target humpies, you got your little boy out there and you just want to get him into fish, where, where would you recommend going and if it were me, I would definitely be looking at that Max Welton and Indian Point. It's kind of an earlier earlier staging spot for these fish. Yep. Uh, I would definitely check there, but another place that I would love to go would be either Browns Bay or that shipwreck area. It's a phenomenal area. Of just years past, you can, there's yep. a lot of pinks that hold up right there. If you go down to uh, Edmonds, down to Richmond Beach area, you're going to get uh, pinks and you're going to catch coho also. Yep. Plus, you can keep uh, coho wild this year. 2003, 23, you can keep uh, wild coho down there. Just just one this year. Okay. It changes every year. Okay. So watch the rules. I love it. We missed anything yet? We think I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty dialed. Yeah. The pinks, it's an every other year fishery. The kids, it's great for the kids. Um, I always like to kind of wrap up these episodes with getting your take on, all right, we caught, we caught a couple humpies, a couple pinks. How do you guys like to prepare them? Smoking them. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what I was doing this morning before I came here. I'm getting uh, the pinks that I caught. The two days of pink fishing that I did is I get get got them in the smoker, yep. got them in my brine. I'm, yep. I'm going to smoke them tomorrow. If you're going to eat fresh pink salmon, only eat it like with the first 24 hours that you catch it and barbecue it. Okay. Uh, don't pan fry it or cook it in the house uh, because it's not a it's a real oily fish. It's not a good pan fried fish. It's really good on the bar. If you put it on the barbecue, put some smoke chips on top of the briquettes. That's okay. if you're using a briquette type uh, uh, barbecue. Um, so 24 hours on the barbecue. Yep. After that, strictly smoker. Love it. Yeah, I was going to ask. Uh, now, does John, do you guys have a, a brine, a good brine recipe that you share? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I might have to get you to. In a five-gallon bucket this morning, okay. I put in uh, a, must be a half gallon of teriyaki. Okay. Some pepper. Okay. Uh, a little bit of garlic. Okay. Half a cup of salt. Um, I go lighter on the salt because they're thinner okay. than like Chinook. Okay. So I go lighter on the salt okay. so they don't get too salty. Okay. Uh, and then some uh, bay leaves, about four bay leaves. Okay. And then uh, I brine them for 24 hours. Okay. Take them out and then brush them with real maple syrup. Ooh. Okay. And put them in a smoker. And when you're brining them, are you brining them overnight or for 24 hours in the fridge? Uh, this time of year, it's in the fridge. In the winter, the I just leave it out in the garage. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, cool. so, and it doesn't take, it doesn't take now, you got to be careful not to overcook them. If you're used to cat, uh, smoking some larger coal mm -hmm. and some Chinook, you know, they can take four to six hours to smoke. These smoke up in about two hours. So if you're smoking humpies, be right there because they okay. smoke up in about two hours pretty quick, especially say, okay. if you're using a Traeger okay. or a Bradley smoker. Is there a temp that you're watching or what's your, what kind yeah, of 150, smoker? 150. 150 is okay. good for almost all, all okay. fish that you're putting in okay. a smoker. For about two hours. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. One thing I, I forgot about taking out of the brine, once you brush your uh, maple syrup on there, l let it air dry for an hour or two. Ooh, okay. Yep. And then onto the smoker, 150, yes. two hours. Yeah, and rotate the trays. Okay. Uh, uh, every hour, rotate the trays okay. uh, in your smoker so it gets done evenly. Okay. All right. Well, we may have to bug you for a uh, more detailed recipe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that is awesome. I love it. I, that's why I love asking you guys. You guys catch more fish than anyone I know, and I'm sure you probably eat more fish than anyone I know. So uh, who better to ask on how to prepare the food? And, and I knew I wanted to mention at the very end, too, how you prepare. I think you and I were talking the other day. you got to get them on ice right away. Yeah. And immediately. You immediately. And, you and process bleed. them. You want to bleed them. Bleed them. Sure. Yeah. Take care of them. Uh, pink salmon are a fairly, fairly soft meated fish. Yeah. They have to be on ice, bled on ice immediately. Yep. Uh, when I'm at the cleaning tray at Bayside where I, where I keep my boat, I clean them back to ice. I mean, heavy ice just, just to get them home. 
Um, when I took my fish, I vacuum pack them. It, even if you're not going to smoke them for even 24 hours, you vacuum pack them immediately. Okay. Uh, when I took my fish out of the vacuum bags that they've been in for about three or four days now, they were solid. I mean, okay. they were like just when I caught them. The fish was really in nice shape. You don't want that meat to start getting soft because okay. then you don't have a good quality smoke product. Love it. Okay, so we're going to barbecue. We're going to smoke our humpies. We're going to come back in the next couple of weeks and do a really good coho Absolutely. episode right in time for the coho derbies, right? We got Edmonds and Everett this year, right? Yeah. Okay. And I know you guys are, are involved in, I believe, both of those. So uh, so stay tuned for that. If you guys have questions, I know um, a lot of people are making, putting comments on these videos, which is great. Guys, get into the shop. Uh, comment on, on your Facebook page. Ask these guys questions. They're so good. You guys and the crew down there are just incredible. Just inc I had probably the best fishing season of my in the last 8 to 10 years, and a lot of it is attributed to the advice and the gear and the techniques I get from you guys. And, and by the way, the lean cod season was, was just awesome Absolutely. too. So, and I'd never done that before. So if a guy like me can go out and put fish in the boat, uh, anyone can do it. And it's <laughs> thanks to you guys. So go down, visit these guys in their shop, um, message them, message us if you have any questions and uh, any parting thoughts? Yes. Um, when you see this gear and you're going fishing, don't try to recreate the wheel. There's a few things that catch a lot of fish. Um, you know, use some of our advice. I'm not saying it's the only thing that catches fish, but if you're not sure, use this stuff and tie it up to the T. Don't make any alterations, and you'll do real well. You'll be successful most days you go fishing. I can say amen to that because <laughs> I have uh, learned from you, and I went down and fished uh, Elliott Bay for the first time for, for, for Chinook today. They opened it for a few days, and on one side I got your 3.0, and with the little eye on the other side, I've got your uh, your little uh, your your green and orange oh, yeah. hoochie with a skirt, and it lit them up. So yeah, it works in the San Juans, works in the sure in, does. The, in area nine, and it works down in ten. All right, you guys, this was great. Uh, we'll see you next time for a coho tutorial. Um, get in and say hi to these guys. Support these guys. They're doing a great job. We'll see you next time on the Happy Homeowner Outdoor Version. Bye for now.